What is it about abandoned places that fascinates us so much? How come there are so many people that are drawn to them like a magnet? In the world, there are many abandoned hotels and resorts. Many of them are absolutely stunning to visit and provide a useful reminder that nothing built by man can ever stand the test of time on its own. From Hitler's dream vacation resort to a hotel that had a very tragic end, here are 20 strangest abandoned hotels in the world. Number 20. Ryugyong Hotel the Ryugyong Hotel is a skyscraper located in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, but it's never been opened yet. The building is also known as Building 105 due to the number of floors it has. Its construction dates back to 1987, but it was stopped in 1992 as the country entered a time of crisis after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. After the year 1992, the skyscraper reached the top floor but without windows and without interior fittings. The work continued in 2008 and finally ended in 2011 when the exterior glazing was completed. The opening to the public has been scheduled successive times but has been postponed. Because of this, the building has been used as an object of ridicule by the foreign press, referring to it as the worst building in the world and the Hotel of Doom, and even the cursed hotel that's never had a single guest. In April 2008, after 16 years of inactivity, work on the building was resumed, this time by the Egyptian company Oriscom Construction Industries. In 2008, government officials stated that the hotel would be ready in 2012, coinciding with the 100th anniversary of Eternal President Kim Il-sung. In the month of July 2011, it was reported that the exterior work had been completed. The Oriscom company added new features to the building, such as glass panels and communication antennas. In September 2012, some photos of the interior of the hotel were shown to the public for the first time. It was clear that there was very little furniture. Two months later, the international hotel operator Kempinski announced that the hotel would be operational by mid-2013. However, these plans were put on hold due to increased political tensions in the country in 2013. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Riviera Hotel this is a myth collapsing literally before your eyes. Tuesday, August 16th, 2016 in Las Vegas, Nevada, the last building of the Hotel Casino Riviera was destroyed by controlled implosion under the eyes of visitors and the inhabitants of the famous Sin City. Dynamite was placed at the level of the foundations and the tower collapsed on itself. Built in 1955, the building housed more than 2,100 rooms on 23 floors as well as a casino of more than 10,000 square meters. For a long time, it hosted the famous Crazy Girls show where the dancers appeared topless. The Riviera closed in May 2015 and will now make way for the construction of the Las Vegas Convention Center, which will host conventions and meetings. But this hotel had a very glamorous past, and it was nothing short of mythical for the inhabitants and lovers of Las Vegas. Famous for its mobster ties, the Riviera had also marked the history of Hollywood cinema. It has served as the setting for dozens of films, including the superb Casino by Martin Scorsese, the gangster film Ocean's Eleven, the erotic Showgirls, or the famous comedy Very Bad Trip. To say goodbye to such an institution, a firework display erupted moments before the demolition of the tower, because, you know, it's Las Vegas and everything is a show. Number 18. Grossinger's Resort Asher Selig and Malke Grossinger were Austrian emigrants looking for an opportunity in the U.S. They acquired a small mountain house, which they named Longbrook House, and turned it into a cozy refuge where rooms were rented by the day to those who traveled there to enjoy nature. The popularity of the business soon began to be profitable, becoming an almost obligatory place of passage for more and more people. Asher Selig oversaw running the small hotel, while Malke cooked delicious dishes. In 1919, Jenny Grossinger, their then 29-year-old daughter, took over the family 
family business, acquiring a much larger property that accommodated more guests. The following three decades were decisive for the growth of that place, which had 35 buildings that offered accommodation to around 150,000 visitors who came there each year to spend their vacations. The small family guest house ended up becoming the Grossinger's Catskill Resort Hotel, a spectacular complex that had, among many other things, ski slopes, Olympic swimming pools, gyms with all kinds of machines, stables with numerous horses for equestrian practice, or a track landing for private planes. The most exclusive of New York's high society gathered there, fashionable Hollywood artists and famous athletes such as boxer Rocky Marciano. In 1952, that place marked a milestone, becoming the first place on the planet where artificial snow was used so that guests could go on the ski slopes even out of season. But all the glory that the hotel had for a good number of decades began to plummet following the death in 1972 of Jenny Grossinger. Her heirs didn't know how to manage that complex and successful place in the same way, gradually extinguishing the spark that made it different and exclusive. They wanted to try new things to attract a different type of clientele. It turned out to be a fiasco, so the resort was gradually left without its select and usual clientele who for so many years had come to spend long periods of time. Already in full decline of the business and as a last attempt to make it flourish, in 1984 they celebrated a macro concert commemorating the 15th anniversary of the famous Woodstock Festival. It was a failure. They lost so much money that the Grossinger family had to sell all the properties after declaring bankruptcy. Number 17. Abandoned Chicaltaya Ski Resort until a little over a decade ago, Bolivia had its own winter sports center. It disappeared due to global warming. Currently, the only winter sports centers in Latin America are in Argentina and Chile. But it wasn't always like this. Bolivia had one, too. It was on Cerro Chacoltaya at 5,395 meters of altitude, a little over an hour's drive from the center of La Paz. While it was operational, it was the highest ski resort on the planet. It was, however, very rudimentary and had only a small poma and a confectionery, which was also the highest in the world. Unlike other ski centers, this one opened in summer and for a few weeks between December and February when the extreme weather at the top of the mountain was more bearable. The Chekultaya Center closed definitively when the glacier on top of the mountain ended up disappearing in May 2009. The facilities were dismantled and currently only a shelter and a laboratory for observation of particles in the atmosphere remain. The disappearance of the Chekultaya glacier is one of the many consequences of global warming that we can see around our planet. The ski center had been created in the late 1930s and received families from the upper classes of La Paz, where once stood a majestic glacier and snow slopes, there is now just a rocky slope. Two brothers continue to live in the shelter on the hill and receive members on excursions with food. For this reason, Chakultaya is still considered the highest restaurant in the world. The hill receives occasional snowfall, but not enough to reform the glacier or create ski slopes. Number 16. Ghost Palace Hotel the colossal Bali Resort has been abandoned since the 1990s. The story of this place is a mix of hauntings, corruption, and a curse. P. Badagul Taman Rekriyasi Hotel and Resort, popularly known as Ghost Palace Hotel, is a gigantic construction that haunts the beautiful countryside of the island of Bali. This resort would probably be the most luxurious of the entire island if it hadn't been completely abandoned. And what's most impressive is that its abandonment happened after many millions of dollars of investment. Practically everything was ready. Installed glass, impeccable marble flooring, finishes, decorative vases, etc. Today, in its large, quiet rooms, the only guests you'll find will be bats, and maybe a few ghosts. There are several urban legends around this place. The best known is that because it was built with money from corruption and through the violent eviction of peasants from the place, a curse hung over the hotel. The workers were haunted by ghosts and ended up dying or fleeing, leaving the work incomplete. Another story goes that the hotel did in fact open, but in the first few days, all the guests and staff simply disappeared without a trace. There's not much official information about the hotel, but the most accepted version is that its construction started around 1990 by businessman Tommy Suhardo, son of the president of Indonesia. Tommy ended up in prison in 2002 after being found guilty of murdering a judge who convicted him of corruption. Number 15. Maya Hotel 
Welcome to the most famous abandoned hotel in the world, the Mayakanko Hotel overlooking Kobe City in Japan. This hotel has been closed and off limits for decades, but now this gorgeous, overgrown and abandoned structure will be accessible on guided tours. Local groups have recently obtained permission from the property owner and are in the process of planning and preparing hiking trips. For all those who like abandoned places, this is amazing news. This hotel was built in 1929 as seen by its Art Deco architecture. It was originally called Maya Club. The four-story hotel offered sweeping views over the city and bay below. Sadly, the cable line was suspended during World War II and the hotel closed its doors in 1945. The hotel endured raids during the war, which damaged the structure. However, in 1961, it reopened its doors to the public after a large remodeling, but having the worst luck ever, in 1967, the Maya Hotel had to once more suspend operations after sustaining damage from a typhoon. In the mid-70s, it was converted into a student seminar center and lodgings, but closed again in 1993. During the Great Hanshin Earthquake of 1993, the hotel was so damaged it became a hazard. They had no other choice but to close it off to the public for safety reasons. Number 14. Abandoned Deer Trail Resort Deep into Souk Potholes Provincial Park on southern Vancouver Island, you'll find the remains of an extravagant chateau that never saw completion. In the 1980s, Albert Ewan, a developer from Victoria, purchased the 160-acre parcel of land overlooking Souk River. It was a beautiful location. The construction on the resort began shortly after. The lodge was conceived as a retreat for those drawn to the lush landscape and quiet outdoors of British Columbia's temperate rainforests, a true paradise. His vision was grandiose, to say the least. It's like a maze. Him and his wife planned a full support infrastructure for their guests. Over 200 luxury rooms, a pool and spa, and access to in-house shopping outlets. Timber Lodge, the centerpiece of the property, would play host to Canada's largest log-burning fireplace. Guests would navigate the resort via winding stone staircases built into the canyon itself. I mean, this place was insane. But as it turned out, luck was not on their side. A dearth of investment dollars eventually sunk their ambitions, and what had been built of the resort was left to crumble. Fast forward to 2004, and the property was then acquired as parkland, and the partially constructed lodge buildings were stripped down to their stonework. Now, it's a perfect hiking destination for all those who love abandoned places that have been reclaimed by nature. Number 13. Hotel Monte Palace According to many, opening this hotel was a poor business decision. It didn't make sense to build the Monte Palace either in this location or at this time. Keep in mind, back in the 1980s, the Azores wasn't on anybody's radar when it came to international tourism. In fact, very few people could place this area on a map, let alone want to visit it. On top of that, its location on the island was remote, which meant guests would need to hire a car to get there, and there wasn't anything within walking distance. Once at the resort, you would have to amuse yourself by either driving yourself around the island or by sitting on your balcony and gazing out at the gorgeous views. Which sounds like paradise for some, but not so much for others. Unsurprisingly, very few people chose to have that experience, and the hotel went bankrupt. Rather than opting to immediately demolish the hotel, the owners decided to place a single guard and his aggressive dogs in the building to deter trespassers. For over a decade, it was near impossible to enter the Monte Palace. Eventually, funding ran out, the guard left, his dogs left also, and the Monte Palace fell into disrepair. Since then, vandals have taken from this once magnificent building anything that could be of use. What's left is the skeleton of a building. Number 12. Abandoned Puerto Azul What was once called the golf capital of the world and Asia's paradise resort today looks more like a nightmare resort, a place that embodies deterioration. But back in the day, the Puerto Azul Golf Club and Country Club in Ternate, Philippines was a lush pleasure destination for the rich and famous. However, today, large portions of the resort have fallen into disrepair, closed off, and abandoned, so much so that the jungle has reclaimed it, and now it's inhabitable. 
When it was at full working capacity, this massive resort had more than 300 rooms spread out in little clusters that essentially formed their own village areas. What really put this place on the map, however, was the challenging and picturesque golf course, which had been designed by a legend in the sport, Gary Player. For a time, it was surrounded by an air of exclusivity and opulence that was nearly unrivaled. You could always find movie stars and the jet set here, only the most glamorous guests. But as it often happens, as quickly as something becomes trendy, it equally quickly becomes passe. The ever-changing tastes of the rich began to pay more attention to other resorts. Also, new and more opulent golf courses opened up in the area, drawing away from the customer base and making Puerto Azul seem more and more dated. Eventually, the once magnificent hotel went bankrupt, and the rest you know. Number 11. The Abandoned Hotels of Kupari Yugoslav dictator Josip Broz Tito used them for his officers' vacations. Now it's in ruins. Kupari was once a very popular tourist resort. This holiday village was first open to tourists in 1919 when a Czech investor built the Grand Hotel on the coast. In those days, Croatia was part of the newly formed Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which had broken away from Austria-Hungary after the end of the First World War. The brick walls, fluted pillars, and neoclassical swirls of the Grand Hotel are a reminder of Croatia's Austro-Hungarian connection. Then, in 1991, the Croatian War of Independence broke out. That summer, the Yugoslav People's Army moved into Dubrovnik and began shelling the historic city. The JNA had captured virtually all of the peninsulas on the Adriatic coast, with the exception of Dubrovnik itself. During the months and years that followed, Dubrovnik and Kupari came under heavy shelling and artillery fire, the scars of which remain visible in Kupari to this day. The largest hotel, Kupari, was engulfed in flames. The Pelegrin Hotel was directly attacked several times, and its interior was devastated when it was used for temporary accommodation by the Croatian Army servicemen. After capturing Kupari from Croatian fighters, the JNA stripped the hotels bare, taking anything and everything of value. Number 10. Abandoned King View Resort this imposing and abandoned complex was supposed to be a five-star beachfront resort called the King View. However, nature had other plans in store. The terrible Boxing Day tsunami of 2004 occurred and it changed everything for the King View. When the tsunami made landfall, the entire region was forced to evacuate. The structure of the resort suffered extensive damage. There were attempts to continue construction, but even after recovery efforts, the project was abandoned amidst disagreements between developers and the local government. The complex consists of several buildings built on top of a parking complex. The remains of a pool, guest rooms, conference rooms, and dining halls are all still visible to the curious visitor. The buildings are fascinating and honestly a bit frightening to explore as they are desolate and incomplete. There are plenty of hazards such as half-finished staircases and random holes in the ground, so it's quite the dangerous affair to visit. But the views from the top floors are spectacular and worth the trouble. This could have been an outstanding facility, giving jobs and security security to a lot of locals. It's a shame they never finished it. Number 9. Pirou Plage Ghost Village Arriving at Pirou Plage in Normandy, France, there was a building with a curious story behind it. It was the Ghost Village, a set of holiday homes built more than 25 years ago and never inhabited. The stench of Cotentin Beach has a special atmosphere. In this place that has never lived, there's a non-life aspect to it. Everything is concentrated here to represent a missed life. Climbing the dunes, it's easy to imagine how Pirou Plage would have become a popular seaside resort for tourists looking for wild coasts. But fate has fallen onto this village of 1,500 inhabitants, which has taken years to extricate itself from a huge real estate scandal. We have to go back to 1990 when the promoter Peer Invest chose this small town in Normandy to house an ambitious project. Aquator. Now, on paper, the project was a dream. It provided for a hotel with a swimming pool, two tennis courts, and nearly 80 pretty pavilions, as so many flourished in those years, all placed on a magnificent site behind the dunes facing the island of Jersey, just a few meters from the sea. But then, the bank Cas de Parne withdrew from the project. Deprived of financing, construction stopped at the beginning of 1992, causing the bankruptcy of several companies and of many individuals already engaged in a tax exemption plan, including the purchase of lots of pavilions. Number 8. Dino Island 
This gorgeous location is found just off the coast near Praia Mare in the southern Italian region of Calabria. There lies the small Dino Island, or Dino? Probably Dino. I'm gonna keep saying Dino because dinosaurs are cool, which was once connected to the mainland until erosion ate away the land bridge. If you ever visit this Italian paradise, you'll notice a sparse collection of buildings that stands among the lush and green foliage, hinting at one chapter of the island long gone. It all started in the 1950s, when Dino Island was sold to a private group that wanted to turn the island into a tourist attraction. The region was in need of some money influx, and this was regarded as a perfect opportunity to inject some liveliness into the area. Plans were made to construct a luxury resort on the little island, but this plan failed, and construction was halted. All that remains of this once great endeavor are some truly like structures and an abandoned restaurant. The island's history is quite a fascinating one as well. This was once a stopping place for pirates, and later Islamic and Ottoman ships frequented the coasts too. The Normans built a tower on the island, and it was later used by the Kingdom of Naples. During World War I, the British streamer Umbala was sunk by a German submarine near the island. Number 7. Abandoned Soviet Sanatoriums of Skaltubo Nothing currently suggests that the quiet town of Skaltubo was, for many years, one of the most popular tourist destinations in the former Soviet Union. There are numerous mineral-rich springs in the area, and scores of luxurious hotels were built in the 1950s to accommodate the thousands of people who came seeking treatment for all manner of ailments. This included Stalin himself, who visited Skaltubo on a regular basis. But the independence of Georgia in 1991 and the subsequent Abkhazia War left the hotels without clients, and these magnificent buildings were left to their own devices. Most of the hotels in Skaltubo are distributed around a huge park located to the south of the town. Currently, many of these constructions are still abandoned and can be explored without any problem, although the indications are conspicuous by their absence, and the route involves walking along the edge of the park and trying your luck on the different detours. Some hotels are perfectly visible, others are more hidden. Abkhazia is a region in northwestern Georgia that had claimed independence since Soviet times. These protests intensified in 1991 after the disintegration of the U.S. SSR, but the Georgian government did not agree to negotiate, and a year later the situation led to an armed conflict. At first, it seemed that the Georgian troops managed to control the revolt, but Russia's military support for the separatists tipped the scales, and in 1993 the Republic of Abkhazia was proclaimed. Number 6. Old Diplomat Hotel Built on a hill with panoramic views over Baguio City, the Hotel Diplomat is considered one of the most haunted places in the Philippines. Its history dates back to 1911 when it was built as a retirement home by the Dominican Order on a 17-hectare land that previously belonged to the Americans. Since its inauguration in 1915 and for two years, it was used as a school, but due to the lack of students, it was converted into a retirement home. During World War II, the building gave shelter to people fleeing from the Japanese who were bombing the surrounding area. After the war, the old building underwent a reconstruction that ended in 1948 when it was opened as a 33-bed hotel, retaining some components from the past, such as a large white stone cross. During the 1970s, the hotel was managed by Tony Agpawa, a businessman and healer who used the hotel to treat patients with psychic surgery, operating on them consciously with his bare hands, leaving no trace of an incision. Although some considered it a fraud, people from all over the world would visit Baguio City to be healed. The hotel was finally closed and abandoned in 1982 when Agpawa passed away at the age of 42. He should have visited a psychic healer, I guess. But even when the diplomat was open, people reported hearing strange noises and seeing headless apparitions. The sightings continued after the hotel closed, giving it a reputation as one of the most haunted places in the Philippines. Visitors of the hotel experienced screaming, rattling, and clanging noises alternating with total silence, as the abandoned condition of the hotel adds to the creepy atmosphere. Some said that the apparitions were the spirits of Agpawa and his patients, while others believe that they were the restless spirits of those fallen in war, such as decapitated priests and nuns. Number 5. Hotel Eden 
The Eden was a hotel in the province of Cordoba, Argentina. Its creation gave rise to the city of La Falda. Important personalities from Argentina and foreigners stayed there, including presidents, artists, and members of the European nobility visiting Argentina, such as the Prince of Wales and Umberto II of Italy, Duke of Savoy, and heir to the throne of Italy. Albert Einstein and Ernesto Che Guevara also visited the hotel. The hotel was built as a resting place for wealthy families from Argentina and Europe. The climate of the mountains was considered healthy for tuberculosis patients and an attraction for travelers from the Northern Hemisphere who wanted to escape the Northern winter. It was autonomous in the matter of the Argentine estancias. It had its own power plant, central heating, workshops, farmhouse, and pens for the supply and processing of all the food that was consumed. It was characterized by its great balls where guests would dress in rigorous etiquette every night of the season. Despite having guests almost constantly, the credits that had been taken for the construction of such a luxurious hotel became almost impossible to pay, and in 1904, the company was dissolved. In 1912, it was acquired by brothers Walter and Bruno Eichhorn. The closeness of Walter Eichhorn and his wife, Ida Bonfert, to Nazism meant that when Argentina declared war on the Axis in 1945, the hotel was seized and used as a luxury prison for members of Japanese diplomacy. Later, it was bought by the firm Tres K. The firm contracted a debt that couldn't be lifted, and in 1953, the hotel went up for auction. Its last season was in 1965, after which it closed its doors forever. Number 4. Hotel Angst The hotel was built in the late 1800s by a Swiss entrepreneur, Adolf Angst, who was very famous in those years in the wealthy circles of half of Europe. Adolf then bought a land on which only an old house in ruins stood, inhabited only by an old woman, Mrs. Gellup, who was firmly opposed to the demolition of her house to build the hotel. However, one night, Mrs. Gellup's house was devastated by a fire, and she died in the flames. Only a large mirror survived, which Mr. Angst kept in the hall of the hotel, which was inaugurated and prospered for a few years. It welcomed European nobility from Russia to Holland, passing through England. But some of the guests began to report hearing disturbing noises at night, footsteps, and frightening screams. One night, the hotel collapsed on itself. After the subsequent restoration of the hotel, the strange phenomena didn't stop, and so the businessman, now exasperated, decided to cover the huge mirror with a sheet. That night, it was rumored that the noises became louder and more disturbing, and an inhuman scream was heard coming from the silence of the hall. Angst was thus convinced that he had defeated Gela's spirit, but his happiness didn't last long. A few years later, the man fell ill with a painful and long illness and died in 1924. The Angst Hotel went bankrupt in 1917 and was later used as a military hospital. Number 3. Ruins of the Hampton Springs Hotel in 1920, the Hampton Springs Hotel was one of the most luxurious hotels in the U.S., boasting lush gardens with elaborate fountains and planters, a covered pool with foot baths which was fed by the springs, tennis courts, stables, a casino, a grand ballroom, an outdoor dance pavilion, railroad depot, and a nine-hole golf course, which was amongst the first in the region. And on top of that, it also had its own power plant, and a majority of the food served in the dining room was grown on the local farm. It was a massive operation and catered to the rich and famous. Doctors started sending ill patients to this resort due to the abundance of spring water in the region. On top of that, the hotel had a hunting and fishing lodge six miles from the hotel and an excursion boat with a covered launch. But then, the war came. From the mid-1930s to the mid-1940s, the hotel served as barracks for military personnel testing aircraft at Perry Foley Airport in nearby Perry. and in 1954, the hotel was destroyed in a fire. It wasn't until 2006 that the site was uncovered and turned into a state park by Taylor County. Number 2. Airy House Ruins Back in its golden days, the Airy House Hotel on top of Mount Nonotuck was a place to see and be seen. Today, it lies in ruins. What happened? It was owned and run by William Strait and opened in 1861. The hotel was a luxurious escape for the wealthy. In the grounds, you could find a picnic area, a croquet field, and masterful views of the Connecticut River and surrounding Mount Tom mountain range. 
In the 1880s, the hotel was at its peak, patronized by several hundred travelers a day who came from far and wide for both scenic picnics and fine dining in the Eyrie House's elegant restaurant. But then, a fatal mistake meant the end of an era for the Eyrie. On the night of April 13, 1901, Street had started a funeral pyre for two deceased horses. Before he knew it, the entire mountaintop was in flames. Thankfully, he was alone at the time, and nobody got injured. When the flames finally died down, only the cellar holes and the walls of the building's stone remained, and they are still there today. Number 1. Prora the Mega Hotel of Prora on the island of Rügen in Germany is known for eight large abandoned structures, which were part of a tourism project planned by the Nazis. Hitler imagined an ambitious plan for a gigantic spa, the most wonderful and largest that ever existed, under the ideal that all workers deserved a vacation in the sun. The complex would house 20,000 beds and a huge building would be erected in the middle. The complex had to be converted into a military hospital in case of war. The construction was carried out between 1936 and 1939 as a project of Kraft durch Freude. The design competition was overseen by Adolf Hitler's chief architect, Albert Speer, and won by Clemens Klotz. According to the designs, all the rooms were planned with a sea view, while the corridors and sanitation are located on the land side. Each 16 by 8 foot room was to have two beds, a closet, and a sink. There were communal toilets, showers, and ballrooms on each floor. The buildings would span a length of 2.7 miles and be approximately 500 feet from the beach. As you can see, every single abandoned hotel has its own story, and they are all different. What about you? Do you enjoy visiting abandoned places? Which one on this video would you like to visit the most? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!